What's going on, Builder News? I'm Breck, and I'm about to give a uh, test. I'm about to read read something awesome. Um, Cowork Coffee. I just met the founder Matt the other day. He's the real deal. I not gonna lie. I thought I had my moments of doubt, but this guy is going to reinvent the coffee shop. Um, let's take a look at this. Not much more than 360 years ago, a Greek named Pasca Rosé opened the first ever coffee house in the heart of London, England. People from all backgrounds swarmed the coffee house to meet, greet, think, write, collaborate, and invent, all while fueling themselves with coffee. This collaborative co-work coffee culture provided a catalyst for deep thought, sophistication, and productivity. And by the dawn of the 18th century, coffee houses were said to be in the thousands. Look at that. Who knew? Who fucking knew that the coffee house was responsible for maybe the Enlightenment? I, I mean, I don't know about the Enlightenment, but you know what I mean. Early coffee, uh, coffee houses were not replicas of each other. Many had their own distinct character. Yet community and what we refer to today as co-working was clearly visible and strong throughout. On entering Don Saltero's Chelsea Coffee House, you would notice the walls adorned with exotic art of animals, a talking point for local gentlemen scientists. At lunch in Clerk, Clerkenwell Green, patrons could sip coffee, have a haircut, enjoy a fiery lecture on the abolition of slavery given its by its barber proprietor. Conversation, co-working, and collaboration were the pillars of these coffee houses. From coffee houses all over London, Samuel Pep Pepe's, Pepe's recorded fantastical tales and metaphysical discussions of voyages across the high hills in Asia above the clouds and the futility of distinguishing between a waking and a dreaming state. A cohesive community with media and communications as founding principles made up coffee house culture, yet both seem alien to us today. Yet both seem alien to us today. People disconnect themselves to the coffee houses and silo themselves to each other with noise canceling headphones in an attempt to create the environment they want and a place they need. They inspired brilliant ideas. Back then, coffee houses brought people and ideas together. They inspired brilliant ideas and discoveries that would make Britain the envy of the world. The first stocks and shares were traded in Jonathan's Coffee House by the Royal Exchange. Merchants, ship captains, cartographers, stockbrokers coalesced into Britain's insurance industry at Lloyd's on Lombard Street. The coffee houses surrounding the Royal Society galvanized scientific breakthroughs. Isaac Newton once dissected a dolphin on the table of the Grecian Coffee House. It was the coffee house, not just the coffee, that used to be the epicenter of creativity for people to build forward momentum in an attempt to innovate and create a brighter future. But how much of this burst of innovation can be traced back to the drink itself? For those of us accustomed to silky smooth flat whites brewed with mathematical precision of one, in one of London's independent cafes, the taste of 18th century coffee would be completely unpalatable. People in the 18th century found it disgusting, too. Routinely compared it to ink, soot, mud, damp, and most commonly excrement. But it was addictive. A mental and physical booth, boost to punctuate the working day and a gateway to inspiration. The taste was secondary. Today, the taste is primary in community, infrastructure, innovation, and collaboration secondary. We've lost our way and the modern patron, the dreamer, the innovator, the writer, the connector is crying out for what we must responsibly deliver. Holy shit, I'm fired up. Thank you, Matt. I'm fired up for coffee houses, for co-work coffee. We must remember the past to forge our future. The flavors found in the latest incarnation of coffee shops today are undoubtedly superior to the past, but the vanishing opportunities for intellectual engagement and spirited co-working and collaboration with colleagues or even strangers have been quite a trade-off. Furthermore, the people that now flood coffee houses during a period of technological superiority combined with workforces that are being transformed remotely and virtually with innovators and entrepreneurs who are being activated more efficiently are initially displaced, settling for what we deem modern because of an enhancement in taste that is more outdated than perhaps its very origin. 
It was 5,500 years ago we unified the wheel and axle to make possible early forms of transportation. Today we must unify co-working tools and coffee houses to power and accelerate modern forms of innovation, productivity, and community. Holy shit, what an amazing story. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Cowork Coffee. I'm a believer. And look at this. So I met Matt the other day at Hiking Hawaii Cafe in Waikiki. And he just installed, look at that internet speed, 160 megabits per second download, 17 megabits per second upload. That ranks number two in download behind this crazy fast McDonald's for some reason. And um, pretty high up there in upload as well. Check out Hiking Hawaii Cafe. Check out Cowork Coffee. Check out coffeetest.net. We, we actually haven't hooked it up to coffeetest.net yet. Matt, you just got to point the DNS to this IP. Um, and what an awesome, awesome thing. Um, what, what a moving essay. Thank you, Matt. Godspeed. Cheers.